All right, this one really has me stumped. When I fire it up, it runs kind of like garbage. And then after about like 30 seconds or so, it like kind of corrects itself and brings the idle up and then she starts running smooth. And out of nowhere, which should be coming up here pretty soon, it's gonna be like, it just spazzes out and just runs like garbage instantaneously. I cannot figure it out. I've tried multiple ECUs, uh, different distributor. Uh, the idle air control valve has now been deleted from it. I've tried a complete whole new throttle body with a throttle position sensor. Timing is good. Vacuum is good. And I don't know what the heck else could be causing this. Welcome back to the channel. This comes to no shocking surprise to any of us around here, but once again, Robbie's car is having another problem. I just showed you a moment ago exactly what it's doing, what it's been doing. Now, this problem originally started just shortly before doing the head swap on it, so it wasn't anything to do with the work that was performed during the head swap. Initially, I thought that it was a, uh, a faulty idle air control valve, so before even doing the head swap, we had already had another uh, control valve laying, laying on hand. So once I had gotten the engine running, and it was running nice and smooth for you guys in the video, I had completely forgotten that, that it had a running issue at all, you know, to begin with. And then it started doing that to me. I was like, oh, oh yeah, the idle air control valve. So I would shut it off, pulled the old control valve off, the new one put the new gasket on it threw it on the motor fired it up lo and behold it was still doing the same thing so kind of like what i had explained to you guys shorthand in the beginning that i thought maybe the uh, idle air control valve was still at fault because it's not a brand new one it's a used unit so I made a little block off plate and eliminated the idle air control valve completely from the system and it was still continuing to do the same thing. <clears throat> Watching on the fuel pressure gauge, it was showing that we had proper fuel pressure even when it was having the issues. I doubled and triple checked to make sure that mechanically the timing was still on and that it hadn't jumped at all and everything was still good to go there. Then I started assuming that maybe that the coil or the ignition control module inside the distributor was starting to go bad. So I grabbed the distributor from the wagon and uh, same issue. Moved over to maybe the throttle position sensor having an issue. So I took the throttle body and throttle position sensor and a brand new gasket from uh, one of my old motors and threw it on here. Still same thing. Initially I ended up coming to unplugging every last sensor on the motor aside from the distributor the fuel injectors and the computer so initially the engine was running only with the computer the fuel injectors and the distributor and it was still doing the same thing it would run smooth then it would run like garbage and once it would start running like garbage it didn't want to run okay until we shut it off fired it back up and it went through another cycling process of running like crap then it would run okay and start running like crap again maybe the computer was at fault so i went inside the car and dug around down here at the floorboard and pulled my computer out so after going through all of that i started thinking maybe my ECU that's in the car that came out of my wrecked coupe, which fried the fuse box, had started uh, going faulty. And uh, grabbed one of, actually grabbed 
three of my ECUs. I have a June ECU, a Spoon ECU, and also another stock P13 ECU. So I threw all three of those ECUs in the car and absolutely nothing changed. I then crawled inside the trunk and started listening to the fuel pump as the car was running, which I heard it running just fine until the car started bogging down, sounding like crap. And when it did that, the tone of the pump completely changed inside the tank. So I figured, oh, the fuel pump is going faulty. That makes sense. The car's not getting enough fuel all the time. So I dropped the tank out to take a look at the fuel pump inside and give it a test. And uh, the pump itself looked okay. Uh, just jumping it straight off a battery, it seemed like everything was okay too. But the assembly looked pretty rusted and nasty. The ground cable or ground uh, wire going to the assembly looked uh, pretty crappy. So I went ahead and put a new wire, a new ground wire, a new ground wire connector on it. Cleaned up the pump assembly and threw it back in. Crossed my fingers, assuming that maybe it wasn't just that it was a bad pump, but the pump was okay, and then it was just getting bad ground. And, well, if you get bad ground, we all know what happens. Nothing works right. So I threw it all back in the car, and we're still here back at square one. So the only conclusion that I'm really coming to is that this O'Reilly fuel pump that's in the car has gone faulty, but we have a lifetime warranty on it. I've already got his car pulled up here on the slab. I'm going to be crawling underneath it to drop the fuel tank out. So I'm going to show you guys how to drop the fuel tanks on these cars, change the fuel pump out, and hopefully that's going to take care of the issue that we're having. Rear of the car is now up off the ground. We've got both sides placed on securely on jack stands. I removed both rear wheels just because that's gonna make it a little bit easier for me while I'm underneath the car. So I'm gonna start this whole thing out by disconnecting the negative on my battery so that there's no longer power going to the car because we're gonna be messing with an electrical component in the system. Got the back seat dropped down. Back there there is a cover plate for the uh, fuel sending unit not the fuel pump but the fuel sending unit uh, it's held on there with the uh, three Phillips head screws we're gonna remove those three screws I'm gonna crawl back here inside the back seat undo the 10 millimeter bolt that's holding the ground wire onto the body and then I'll unplug the uh, three wire plug for the uh, fuel pump and, and gauge unit and we're gonna end up fishing that down with the fuel tank when we drop it out of the car Now I'm going to come down here below the car and what I'm going to be doing here is just going to be something that's going to help make this fuel tank come out and go back in a lot easier. You don't necessarily have to go through this extent of what I'm going to be doing to make enough room back here, but um, the fuel tank on the passenger side of the car likes to sit right above the heat shield and the exhaust. So I'm going to be working on disconnecting Robbie's exhaust here that's running from the back up to the up to just about over there uh, behind the test pipe on the S curve. I'm gonna unbolt those units, drop everything off of the hangers, and then I'm gonna work on getting all the 10 millimeter bolts that hold the heat shield onto the car. And then we'll move on to the other side of the car 
before we get ready to drop the tank out. exhaust and the heat shield is out from underneath there. I'm going to start working on all the fuel lines. Before I do, I'm going to relieve the pressure out of the system. I'm making sure I'm taking the fuel cap out to relieve the pressure. I'm going to be taking that clamp off of the main filler hose. Right above it, there's another breather hose. We're going to pull that clamp off to take that hose off as well. And down here, we've got fuel vapor line and then the fuel return back line and then we've got our main fuel line coming up over here so I'll get these clamps removed I'll get both of these hoses off we'll come up here and with a 14 millimeter uh, line wrench we're gonna break loose the fuel line and then the actual main line coming from the pump to, of the tank to the car this line running here bolted to the frame rail with two 10 millimeter bolts we'll remove all those and we'll be able to undo the straps of the tank and drop this sucker out all the lines and hoses are undone I've got the exhaust and heat shield out of the way wirings unplugged sitting on top of the tank ready to come down I'm gonna put a jack underneath this uh, fuel tank and we'll take the two 14 millimeter bolts out to the straps that are holding the tank up and we can slowly drop her down slide this thing out from underneath the car and we'll be able to mess around with the fuel pump. for us to get this pump out. I need to remove this eight millimeter holding the fuel lines onto the tank. Get this vapor line off. Unplug the connector for the wire harness. And then I can remove all six 10 millimeter nuts and we can pull the pump out of the tank. Now that the pump is out, as you guys can see, I mean, it still looks beautiful, but it is an O'Reilly Import Direct, and this is fuel pump number either four or five in the last five years. So, and what I was talking about when I had pulled it out before, you can see that the fuel pump assembly just looks really nasty. And then this is what I was talking about with the ground wire, because the pump assembly was all nasty. I got it cleaned up the best that I could, got a new uh, ground screw, and I also replaced just this little portion of the, of the uh, connector and put it back in because on the bench the pump seemed just fine, but when it's in the car it, it runs just fine for a moment and then it seems like it's just losing pressure, or at least it sounds like it when I'm listening to it in the tank. We just got to get the clamps off. Because it's going to come, the pump's going to come with a new hose. We'll get the uh, the sock disattached from the pump because the pump doesn't come with the sock either. Unplug the uh, connector, and um, and somewhere around here, we have a whole entire really good uh, fuel pump assembly to replace this one with. We don't want to throw a whole other new pump onto a nasty assembly again and drop that into a nice clean fuel tank. And end up possibly having problems again down the road with this thing just being garbage. So all we got to do now is get the pump. I'll get this thing pulled off. And as soon as we get the new pump on our hand, we're going to put it back in. And I'll show you guys 
pretty much it's just the opposite of just taking it all out you know i'll show you guys putting the tank back in all right new pump is finally here and we've got a nice good clean fuel pump assembly to throw the new pump on hopefully this is going to take care of all our running issues with this thing because i don't know what the hell else it could be new pump is now on our new assembly everything's ready to go and be dropped back into the tank Robbie's out there scooting the tank out from underneath the car, and we're going to drop that thing in. This thing's ready to rock and roll, go back up inside the car. There's about 7 or 8 gallons of fuel in this tank, so it's going to take both me and Robbie at the same time to be able to lift this thing up off the ground and get it bolted back up under the car. Once we do, we'll show you the rest. Everything's now all bolted up in. We've got all our hoses and lines are all reattached. The exhaust and heat shields put back up in. Working on getting the tires back on. Robbie got all the wiring all put back together inside the car already. So once we get this thing back on the ground, we'll be ready to test wire it up and hope that the fuel pump has been our problem. All right, everybody. Time to cross our fingers. Prime up the fuel system for a moment. Get enough fuel up to the motor. Fire it up once. It'll probably run like crap. Then we'll shut it off and fire it up again. Let's see what she does. Are we back to it doing the same shit? Just fired it up a third time. It's only 40 kids. 40 kids. Well, let's see what happens. I mean, she's she fired up fine this third time. But is it going to just do the same thing that it's been doing to us, where it runs like crap, and then it'll run fine, and then it'll run like just crap again? Well, at first I thought maybe we were screwed after this third time of firing it up. Seems to be doing a lot better. I think maybe we just need to go take this thing for a drive, uh, get this thing warmed up, keep running and driving it, keep shutting it off, keep starting it up, and uh, see if the problem went away or if we finally got this thing fixed. Yeah, that's gonna look great, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Fresh blue wrinkle coated valve cover for Robbie. Yeah, that's gonna look great in here, bro. 
I think maybe that was the problem. So far, she's running, she's running good again for a lot longer than it has been. Yeah. And again, our idle air control valve has been blocked off and deleted. So as far as anything that's being controlled by the idle, it's all throttle position sensor, or throttle stopping point. Sorry, I spoke too soon. I, I just really don't know what this could be causing this. I've tried the computer, got the control valve deleted, a whole other throttle body with a DPS sensor, a whole different distributor out of a perfectly fine running car. Brand new fuel pump now. Man, I, I'm, I'm just totally stumped. All right, so the car died out on us once. When I fired it back up, she had a check engine light on. So now I'm checking the check engine codes. Pulling the code 14, which is the idle air control valve. We have that thing blocked off, so I'm just going to kind of ignore that code, at least for the moment. The code 43 is a fuel supply system code, a very basic general fuel problem code, which could relatively be anything. Anything from the O2 sensor, something up with the fuel injectors. I, pretty much anything like fuel pressure but I don't know because it's tripping a check engine light which makes me feel it's something electronic there's a brand new O2 sensor in here that's a Denso direct fit so we know it's a good sensor not sure what else for now at least I was able to show you guys how to change out the fuel pump on these cars and we're at least getting closer and closer to being able to figure out what's going wrong with this uh the whole running issue with the thing I mean at least it's it seems like after we changed the fuel pump out the, the problem has now changed to a different problem but somewhere along the same lines now that we got a good fuel pump in it. I don't know so we're gonna have to sit and scratch our heads and think about this one we're gonna read through the uh actual factory service manual to uh, fully diagnose the codes that we're pulling up. So right now, that's all we can really do for the moment. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sharing these videos. Keep hitting them subscribe buttons. Keep sharing these videos. Do the whole YouTube thing, you know. Till next time, guys. Peace out.